Um, thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, we're going to start in a, in a couple minutes, um, two to three minutes. Chantel, hi. Hi. I'm a very sad day today. Oh, every day is a sad day, depending on how you look at it. But yeah. on. nice pick, Ryan. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on right now in the world, for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <sighs> So Mark Gilvey from Mangerine. I don't know where that is. Anybody ever heard of Mangerine? Uh, no. I have now. Shout out to Chris Suspect in the audience. Chris, right, uh, Chris. Hey. thanks for joining us. We may uh, turn your mic and, and video on at the, at the Q&A section, so be prepared for that. All right. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We're going to start here in about um, two minutes. <laughs> oh, that's not where you're from. Uh, it's, it's it's called the Drake. It's a mandarin. Okay, yeah. I got it. <laughs> this is happy hour, so I hope everybody has a drink. DC Brow, drink local. Hey. Oh. Okay, so I was wrong. I thought it was from Maryland. It's actually from Wisconsin. <laughs> All Still right. good though. Is he in the hotel? Is it the Mandarin Hotel or is it actually the Mandarin? The Mandarin. The Mandarin. Is it the Mandarin? Yeah. Could be. Mandarin Hotel. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh jeez. <laughs> Oh, I meant that to the uh, attendees. Yeah, you have to change your. Um, <laughs> Got it. Change change your drop down if you want to do that to the attendees. I think someone asked about it at one point. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so we will start here in about one minute. Is anybody has anybody been out there shooting? Um, anybody anybody. Shooting at all these days, doing doing street photography. Oh, I am. Yeah, I saw your your IG feed. Yeah, I did go once, <laughs> um, but that that was about it, and I I was there for like half an hour. Um, I mean, now that things are opening, maybe I will try to do more. But with two little kids at home, it's a little challenging. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. I, hear you. I don't. I only have one. I have a, a, a four and a half year old daughter. I think Kanayo, you have a daughter about my my daughter's age, right? Or yeah, my daughter is uh, three. Three. Okay. Yeah, she just turned three. Wait. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I actually don't know how my daughter is right now. So give me. <laughs> All right. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I have to guess, I think she she might be four. It's been a long. It's been a long week. <laughs> when I met you, she was two, and that was two years ago. So. Okay, so she might just she she she's three now. She just turned three. Uh, I, I think my daughter is twelve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my, mine is twenty-two. All right, we're we're gonna get started. Um, Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. This is going to be really fun. Um, uh, hour or two. Uh, talking about street photography. Uh, we've got a, a great panel today. Uh, these are members of the DC Street Photography Collective, one of the organizations here in DC that really make this city uh, such a vibrant place for photography. What, what I really like about uh, the, the Street Photography Collective, uh, they go by the, 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 the acronym DCSPC, um, is that they're really, they're a nonprofit and they, they give back to the community. Um, before the shutdown, they were doing regular um, critiques and photo slams uh, locally and, and um, you know, 
I, I really, I, I really am impressed with what they've done in the, in the last two years as far as really recruiting some some um, amazing photographers. Uh, I think we're missing two from the panel today: um, Robert Trejo Jr. and um, Chris Suspect, and that makes up your your complete um, collective. Um, but anyways, thanks thanks for joining us. We're we're gonna um, go through. And I'm going to introduce everyone uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, first, I also want to give a shout out to Chantal Wong, who is with Focus on this Story. She's going to be our scorekeeper today. Uh, thanks for joining, joining us, Chantal. Um, first up, let's see, Kanayo, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, OK, well, I was uh, born in DC. I grew up in, in Nigeria. Um, and came to the U.S. about in 2002 for college, where I went to the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and studied, uh, got my master's, my bachelor's of science and master's of science from, in information systems. Um, I am a primarily a wedding, uh, wedding photographer, wedding, com I do commercial work, and I'm also a street photographer, obviously. Um, and I mean, I've been, I've uh, been, making pictures since 2014. So tell, tell me about your street photography. I mean, I've seen your wedding stuff and your wedding stuff is spectacular. And I know that you, you do some classes and seminars and you speak on wedding photography all over the place with WPPI and, and so forth. But tell me about your street photography. How, how does that differ creative, creative, you know, your creative juices? How do you channel your, what you, what you do every day in your commercial work into your, your street photography? So, um, Basically, I think I look at photography as one whole thing. Um, I kind of approach all my photography from the same space. Um, while there are things I've learned from street photography, like you know the documentary side of things, um, I take I take that experience from you know being on the street and making images in places that are new to me and you know uncomfortable. And I take that same energy and take it into my weddings for the documentary side of things, learning to document moments better at weddings in a more scripted environment. And also my creative side, the way I approach portraiture with you know, minimalism and you know, strong design language, you know, with my portrait on the wedding side, I also take that as my aesthetics from my uh, street photography. So I feel like both of them kind of inform how I approach the other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good, okay. So next uh, uh, is um, Ryan, Ryan Madison. Ryan Madison, um, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you got into street photography. Um, so <clears throat> I was a photography student, uh, BFA photography student at the University of Arizona, um, where uh, Frank Golke used to teach. And um, I had been shooting black and white fine art for, I guess, a few years. And um, uh, my senior year, I uh, I had the teacher, um, I, I had a, I guess he was a visiting artist, actually, um, from New York, uh, Serge Levy, and um, he kind of got me into street photography. I took his documentary class, and um, I, I kind of started making street images not knowing I was making street images, and he kind of guided me in the right, on the right path, and, uh, you know, showed me people that I should be looking at. Um, you know, as I first got started. And then um, <clears throat> after I graduated in 2014 from the University of Arizona, I came back back east. Uh, this is where I'm from. I was born in Baltimore. Um, and I just like had such a drive to just make photos. So like right after college, I just hit the ground running, taking pictures of, you know, everything and anything in the street that was interesting. And um, I got to a point where I was shooting and I was like, you know what, I, I really, truly miss the, the environment that you find at, you know, a university type level, you know, photography class. And um, I, I was like thinking in my head, we, we need something like this here. And, and so I was hoping that somebody would come by and say, oh yeah, that's a great idea and just kind of do it. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll like, see if I can join the thing if they do it and you know a year went by of shooting in DC and it was like there was nobody and I was like I know there's photographers in DC I know there are extremely talented people I just gotta figure out a framework to find them all and um, so that's really what started it um, just 
going out there and not seeing a ton of people um, and wanting to create a community where, you know, um, obviously like we, we had the collective, so everyone has an equal say in the collective, uh, but also we wanted to engage the community. And I'm glad you brought that up because that's really important for us um, to do as many things as we can do to evolve the community and kind of just like heighten the awareness of street photography especially in today's climate with, you know, how people react to getting photographed um, as opposed to other, you know, yeah. other countries. So. Absolutely. Well, we're glad you, we, we, we're glad you uh, put this group together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really think it's, it's been a, a great benefit for our, our photography community. Tom Mullins. First, tell us a little bit about your, your work and, and, and your passion for street photography. But first, give me the backstory on your, um, on the profile picture here, are you in the top optometrist? <laughs> I got, uh, when you reach a certain age, you get start getting dragged <laughs> into all kinds of different medical professionals' offices. Uh, so, uh, and you're left alone in these waiting rooms. So I took the opportunity to make use of the equipment that was lying around here. I, I sort of like it. It's, <laughs> um, it, it kind of feet, goes into a little bit of my favorite photography quote, which is Dorothea Lange's uh, statement that a, a camera is a machine that teaches you to see without a camera. Um, that uh, it's really peripheral uh, to, uh, to, the, to the discipline in, a, for me, the actual images. The, the beauty of street photography is that you're allowed to, you're invited to wander around with your eyes open instead of sleepwalking through your, through your day, walking through the streets. You're looking for the angles, you're looking for the light, and it just adds an extra layer of aesthetic beauty and um, sensibility. Uh, you're in, the, it puts you in the moment more than you would otherwise be. And that's a kind of a, a kind of a grace that's offered to you. If you get, and if you get a picture that you can share and catch and brag about, that's all the better. But I like that uh, response and I, I like the quote, uh, uh, but let me ask you, street photography has always, in my mind, been a solitary endeavor, um, going out on your own and um, just seeing what, what, what you encounter. What, what is your experience with the collective? What, what is the, benef the benefit for being in a collective? Uh, well, being in a collective is, and you know, Ryan, everyone mentioned their teachers here. I, I was privileged to go to Hampshire College with uh, Jerry Liebling, who had been in the Photo League, and Elaine Mays, who's an extraordinary talent of her own. Um, and, uh, and this is a continuation of that education, to be with people who are intelligent, well-read, um, opinionated, uh, and force you to think about what it is you're, you're actually trying to do, what you're trying to say, what, um, your, uh, what your obligations are as a photographer. You know, again, you can't sleepwalk through, through your process if you're surrounded by people who are actively in, and intelligently thinking about uh, what's going on around them. So that's, that's, that's the merit. And then to do these events, which have been so wonderful. And I'm sorry, Chris Suspect's not here. Um, he is, he's in the audience. He's in the audience, but a shout out to Chris who has a deep portfolio of, uh, of photographers uh, or, or deep Rolodex, if we can still use that word, um, of, of talented photographers who very generously have come and, and shared with us and with our audiences that we've been able to put together at, uh, at, uh, over time. Yeah, no. Right, rambling on, but it, it's, um, it's re it really is a communal act uh, as much as a solitary act. Uh, and that's just that just augments the whole process. Excellent, uh, and definitely shout out to Chris. Uh, Chris is a co-founder of the Focus on the Story Photo Festival. Helped us put together the first year's festival in 2018, and, and it was a tremendous lineup we had that year. It, uh, it's kind of mind-boggling the names we we had. But anyways, moving on. More about that later. Moving on to Sophia, Sebastian. Tell us. Now, I, I've got to, you know, Sophia, all of y'all are, are extremely talented, but I've sort of watched in all over this past year where you've really got a lot of international accolades for your work. Tell us about sort of that um, emerging and, and how that's affected your work at all or 
or what you've learned from, from some of that international ex exposure that you've been getting? Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Um, well, I, um, I have to say that um, a street photography for me is kind of like a recent, um, a recent thing, a recent development. Um, I think that I, I mean, I've, I've been doing photography for many years, since probably 2010, but I was kind of like trying different um, genres. I was doing uh, self-portraitry, um, documentary work, but kind of like nothing clicked and I was not satisfied. I mean, I, I enjoy it, but I just didn't feel like very passionate about it. But it was around 2017 that I, um, I had a break um, between jobs and a friend of mine told me that he was gonna do a street photography workshop. I had heard about street photography, but I just, you know, and I had pictures of, uh, of the street, um, but I just, I don't know why, like I never took it seriously. And I, because I had this break, I, I just decided to, to do it. And, um, and I just fell in love with it. Um, I became, obs became obsessed. Um, so that's how everything started and I, I don't know why, I guess that because I had a lot of experience with photography already, I feel like I, my evolution was quite, um, fast and quick, plus I was obsessed. So I, it's not that I was on the street every day, but I, it became kind of like one of my major drivers and, uh, yeah, and it's true, like in the last year I've had, um, some recognition, international recognition, and and it's as I, I think it's great. Um, you know, it kind of um, gives you an opportunity to share your work and to to meet other people. Uh, I think it's one of the best things of, for example, going to festivals. I was a finalist in a couple of them, and I made the decision to just go um, because I have never been in one, and it's just a fantastic experience. You learn so much from meeting other people from seeing the pictures, the actual physical pictures and going to lectures, meeting photographers that you would uh, never, you would never meet otherwise. So in that respect, it has been, it has been great. Um, yeah. Excellent. Well, you've been a great amb ambassador. Um, uh, and last, but certainly not least, Ashley Tillery. Um, met Ashley a year or so ago and I was just really impressed with your enthusiasm and just your sort of gr great bubbly personality and, 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 and but you're just a, a sharpshooter on the street. You know, I, I really enjoy your, your IG feed. Tell us a little bit how you got into street photography and, and where you hope it takes you. So I got into street photography not knowing what street photography was. Um, so I got one of those BS degrees right like i get i got a liberal arts degree and i guess in 2008 um i was working with americorps and 2008 is when the bottom fell out of everything that was bent on i don't know like kindness and art and beauty and fortunately my parents had a house down in florida that they were like you don't have any money, but you need some place to live. And I was like, thank you for not letting me be homeless. So I moved down to that house in Florida. And because I was looking for something to do, because Florida didn't have a place for me in my degree program, I, I just started riding my bike around town. And Florida is a very racially divided place, especially where I was in Florida. And I remember asking a question because I remember riding my bike on a Wednesday and I was like, Hey, there's so many kids on a Wednesday who should be in school. Why aren't they in school? And the answer came back to me is that they need to take care of their little brothers and their little sisters. And with my background being in anthropology and sociology, I was like, I think it's important to document this, especially because people at the top assume that people at the bottom are lazy or they don't want to do anything and they're not privy to the nuances 
of everyday life. They're not privy to the nuance of, you know, I got a 16 year old child, but I have five children below them. And my 16 year old child needs to watch these children so I can keep the lights on. And that's where I was introduced to street photography because I think street photography at its best is documentary. And it's about telling stories and it's about sitting down and talking to people. So that's where I started. Um, and I created my, my own nonprofit based on the Sunshine Standards in Florida. Eventually, I wound up moving up to DC because of health issues. And when I moved here, I was like, but I still have this desire to tell stories that, might, that matter through street photography, through those everyday conversations. And I kind of continued to do that when I was here. Um, my focus is on Black people, and I think given the political environment, there's real value to that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because you can't kill me without telling me your story. I can't die without you knowing the reasons why I was. So I continue to do street photography because my background is political science and it is anthropology and it is sociology. And I take pictures now because unfortunately, those pictures may be proof that people lived and they had lives. And um, yeah, that they, that they matter. I mean, that they matter. It's a very like Black Lives Matter thing, but not directly. It's mostly a record for myself. Well, I think that's what we all do, right? We're documenting, we're documenting our time uh, right. here. So. Uh, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, so this is Street Slam. It's the first time Focus on the Story has done this, but our panel here today, they, they've, they've done this. Uh, it's not their first rodeo, let's say. So, but here's, I want to just go over uh, what's going to happen today. Um, we've got, we've had a mm, couple hundred photos that were submitted uh, for um, today's critique. Uh, Focus on the Story selected 20 finalists and they're going to be shown in random order today i actually used a random number generator to put these uh photos in order the none of the panelists have seen the photos um they may have seen the photos before but they haven't they weren't aware of which 20 uh made the um made the critique today so that'll be um fresh to them uh each judge uh will get a chance to uh, score the image uh, from one to five, with one uh, being the low, low part of the scale and five being the high. Uh, we'll also get two, or two to three of them. Um, each image will give their thoughts on what they like about the photo, uh, what they might have done differently. Um, and um, we'll see how time goes, uh, you know, whether we can, whether all five will get to comment on each photo, but um, we'll get some good discussion about each one. Um, and then, uh, we're going to award prizes, hey, um, to the to the top three images today. Uh, Chantal, who is with us uh, and on the board of directors for Focus on the Story, will be our official scorekeeper. If there's a tie, we'll come back and judges will vote to break the tie. First place today, you we are giving away a Loom Cube Air, which is a small on camera, compact light that uh, I've never used it, but they look really cool. And uh, um, I, I would love to, to test that thing out. Uh, a lens flipper, which is, that's the uh, Loom Cube Air. Lens flipper will allow you to carry a lens, an extra lens around. And uh, apparently you can just change lenses in, in, in two to three seconds. This uh, thing looks pretty cool too. And also a um, uh, Fujifilm Instax printer for first place. Uh, second place, we'll get the Loom Cube Air and the Lens Flipper. And third place, we'll get a Loom Cube Air. Um, okay, are we ready? Yeah! I'm ready. <laughs> okay, this is the first image. I'm not going to give the names of, of any of the, um, 
artists uh, in this first round. Um, we'll, we'll do this so that it's uh, somewhat blind, so that it doesn't influence uh, any of the judges if they know the, um, uh, the photographer. Uh, the first image, and we're going to start in alphabetical order with, with the comments, and I'll change that order each for each for each image. Um, Kanayo, <laughs> you're up. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, I like this image. It's uh, it's basically shows you know. A day in the life of the of the of a mother, you know. Uh, I guess I can relate to it because you know I am a parent and my wife deals with my daughter all the time, and my daughter will be more of the one on the back pulling her on the neck. Um, I, I like the image. Uh, it's it's a great moment. Um, yeah, I don't I don't have anything bad to say about it. I, I like what it's, I, I like that it tells a story and I, I can relate to the story. Yeah, we definitely don't need to say anything bad about any of the images, but we can always talk about what you might have done differently. Ryan, you want to take a shot? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm definitely interested in the, in the imagery, you know, this is in between moment. I mean, I wouldn't know I guess I shouldn't say in between. Um, but you know, she's in between one child, you know, going to the next, she's trying to juggle it all. Um, it just works, um, you know, and it, it tells it tells a story of this mother. Um, another thing aesthetically I like is just the floral patterns that the whole group is wearing. Um, it's a little hard to see the person in the back, but if you look closely, you can see that, you know, the mother obviously, you know, had them dressed this way. And I think that's interesting. Um, the colors, you know, um, just a typical New York subway. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is definitely a moment here. And, uh, I think it was, it was captured beautifully. Uh, so anybody else want to, want to, um, yeah, I, can I, 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 I yeah, or, yeah, go ahead. Right. One mother amongst us should speak. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, I think it's just a really, really nice, uh, moment. And the gesture of that girl is just, uh, really uh, wonderful. What I like about this picture is that, you know, they, they kind of form a triangle, which is always like um, very pleasing to the eye. And there's like a lot of lines that, so in a way, even though it's about the moment, there's a lot of geometry that kind of uh, works in the picture and, and the gesture. Excellent. I, can I comment just for a yeah, second? Yeah, I think just the the light is, is so wonderful. I'm surprised nobody's mentioned it. It's, yeah, the light is gorgeous. It's like a Bellini or a, a Titian. It's it could be some corner of um, the the Thank feast you. of the gods, um, <laughs> which you'll see in the National Gallery. It's the um, the uh, hand gesture, the um, and the and the colors also just all complement each other. The colors in the dress match the colors in the map. It's really uh, there's really a lot to enjoy here. Yeah, I was going to say it's a very striking uh, image. To me, it feels like a modern Madonna, right? Um, <laughs> well I go into my whole story thing, but this is the modern Madonna, and you have to think about a system where your children are sacrifices, right? And that's kind of that. That's an insular level that works for me, but it's it, it is beautiful. And to write, uh, to pick up on what Tom was saying, is that you are looking at like almost, almost a Renaissance painting, painted in photography. And so you're looking at two different mediums and two different times. But honestly, if it, Rembrandt could have painted this. All right. right. You know, and you just darken the colors. And that's, that's what it looks like. And, I like the painterly quality of this. Nice. It's a beautiful picture. Let's um, is let's, that hard go, let's all go ahead and uh, get some scores. Uh, Chantel, let me know when you've recorded everything. Wait. Uh, you have a small um, number. Come close. <laughs> can I give it a four? Yes. I'm not starting real strong. But I give this a four. It's gorgeous. Four. Yeah. I, I got to get my uh, numbers better. Oh. 
<laughs> you good, you Sean? Sharpie. Yeah. Everybody's four. Or everybody's four. All right. Uh, next image. And I'm going to start with Ryan. <laughs> um, why? Because I made that noise? <laughs> no, because we're going out for the quarter. Okay. <laughs> uh, <you're next. laughs> um, so if anybody didn't catch that, right when I saw the image, within less than a second, I was like, oh. And uh, that's a good sign, obviously. Um, the photographer certainly knew what he or she was doing. Um, and it's incredibly hilarious. And the, you know, the, the juxtaposition between um, what we can assume are these two nuns outside what looks like old church doors and the 666 on the, on the, um, you know, the car are very striking. Um, I, I'm curious if uh, it was brought into black and white just to, or if it was, I think it looks like it was digital. So I would assume it was converted. Um, but um, the nuns do kind of combine into one giant nun a little bit. Um, and I wonder if there could have possibly been some more separation. And, uh, you know, with street photography, it's in, in tricks, it's incredibly difficult, you know, to photograph because you're, you're not controlling your subjects. So um, you know, that kind of goes without saying, I guess, but, uh, um, yeah, cool. It's well done. Tom, you got anything to add to that? Uh, what Ryan said. I would like to just add. Uh, yeah, a couple of things. I, I mean, it's great. I don't mind so much that they're together because they're kind of like walking at the same pace. So it's fun. And with the, it's fine. And with the sign, it's kind of like, you know, a nun with two heads. I think that would be totally fine. And the fact that one of them is looking at us kind of separates them. So I think that's good. The only thing that I think might have been better is just if the nuns were like in the middle of the door rather than like in that intersection uh, between like the frame and the door. That would be my, my only thing that maybe like if you click the shutter one, you know, one tenth of a second before then there would have been but so, at the same uh, time, they're like walking like same pace. So that's, I don't know if that would have been possible otherwise. So uh, to be fair, I, 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 you know, I was thinking of the same thing, having them right in the center. Um, but, you know, if you imagine that they were back just a little bit more, I can also imagine that, you know, the nun on the far side from us, you wouldn't be able to see her face maybe at all. It'd be, or at least it would be more covered. Mm -hmm. um, but well, you, know, you got to work with, you got to work with what you got. And I guess for me, looking at a history of colonialism, I don't even care about the door. I wish they were closer to the 666. I do really appreciate that they almost seem like an amalgamous sort of thing. Um, because if you look at a history of colonialism, it starts with the church. And, you know, maybe that's specific to me, right? That's, you know, maybe that's specific to my own Black experience. But, to me, I, I see danger in the church. I see the sublimation of um, native spirituality. And I don't think they should be closer to the door. I think they should be closer to the 666 because the door presents itself as a way out. I actually really love this picture and I love that they're not distinguished from one another, but I don't want them by the door. I want them closer to this little, if you go from the door over and you, you have this little white piece, I want them closer to that. You know what, like you're, you're right. And there's a higher contrast with the white uh, frame of the door. So yeah, I, I see that. It's a beautiful, I, I mean, it's a beautiful damning and sort of sinister picture. And comedic. <laughs> and comedic, but is it? <laughs> that got dark. <laughs> but it's a great picture. All right. Well, let's uh, <laughs> let's have a vote. Hmm. Wow, I already started with a four. I wish I could put I up two numbers. <laughs> um, three for me. I, I'm not yeah. going a three, and I can't give it a five. Maybe I, I have my four. Maybe we finish with uh, a 
Do I have yours? Maybe we finish and then we have a best of and then we rate the best of because this is a really great picture. It is. It is. It's a beautiful picture. Uh, what about yours? Are you good, Chantal? Uh, no, I don't have Ashley. Ashley, what did you say? I guess I'm going to say four. Four. Okay. Thank you. Um, great start. The first two yeah. out of the, out mm -hmm. of the strong, strong images. All random order now. Come on. Uh, uh, next up, let's start with you, Tom. Um, I'm guessing this is Morocco uh, by the star on uh, the fellow's hat and the um, post holes in the wall. It's, uh, uh, but that could, that's also in other places in, um, in Africa. But it's a common building technique. This this is really nicely done. The the people are splayed out really well. The colors are are great. I wish there was slightly better separation, um, but uh, it's a cool it's a cool picture. I I'd be very happy with this if uh, if I'd taken it. Um, I don't. I guess I wish perhaps he'd taken or she had taken the camera and pointed it a little bit more to the right and so we didn't have the back of the, uh, the motorcycle or, or moped and the bush. But the stop sign is, is lovely. All that, that, uh, that mellow red uh, repeated through the image. Uh, I, don't, I don't, other than that, I, uh, it's just a, a, a lovely picture. It's, it's, it's a fine eye, obviously, behind this. Sophia? Yeah, I mean, I, I really like the, the picture. I think there is uh, nice layers. Um, you have like different people, different distances. Uh, you almost have like a diamond between the, the guy who is like, kind of like uh, sitting or lying down at the back and the first guy with the two in, uh, in between, like two triangles. I mean, it's just very pleasing to the eye, the way everything is arranged in the, in the picture. And then the sign that is kind of like tilted, um, kind of like works, um, a little fragment on the left um, and the colors. Yeah, everything. I mean, the fact that the strawberries match, you know, the, um, the hat and and then the sign. I mean, and then so it's mostly like green, red, blue. Yeah, I really, I really like it. Anyone else want to comment? I would say uh, it, it's a beautiful picture. The thing that really stands out to me are the strawberries, more so than anything else. Especially if you're looking at a desert environment, especially if you're looking at. Um, countries, whether it's Africa or Southeast Asia, where um, you have sexual colonialism. And the fact that you have all men in that picture, and I know, like, maybe I'm overreaching, but that's kind of what I see there. And it, I, I, it really works. And I, I do agree with Tom. Like, you know, you cut out the motorcycle and you get something very interesting because you have ripe fruit, but you have people wilting on the bike, especially when you get to that, like, no sign. You have two, especially the guy in the background, and you compare his motion to that tilted cart to his tilted body. I don't know. It, it, it's, it's a beautiful and impactful picture, and you could pull things out there forever, but there, there's something about the juxtaposition of right strawberries and wilting people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, anyone else want to uh, weigh in before we vote? Okay, let's vote. Am I, am I allowed to give something a four again? I give it a four. Yes. <laughs> give it anything from one, to, one to five. <laughs> Okay, uh, Ashley. Yes. What's your What's your vote? I I give it a four. I want to give it a five, but we have so far to go. You right. 
You can do that again. I got it. Give it a five if you need to. Yes. I'll give it a five. This is beautiful. beautiful picture. I'm sorry, you want to change your vote? Yeah. Ash is changing your vote. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, no, don't apologize. Okay. Don't apologize. Okay. <laughs> All right. So are we good, Chantal? Yep. Okay. Uh, next up. And um, sure. I think uh, Sophia is, is going to lead off. Okay. Um, I like the picture. I just wish it was a little, a little bit sharper because I, th I think it's not, or maybe it's the quality of the file. Um, I mean, I think it's a, it's a nice moment. I mean, I don't like it as much as the previous picture because there's just, um, it's about the gesture of the girl. And then there's like people on the back. I wish there was more like, um, more things happening and on different uh, planes, like layers. Um, so, I mean, obviously the color is great. It's just basically blue and brownish, which is great. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely like a, a peak of the gesture, like he, the photographer got it right at the moment at the highest point. So, um, but I, yeah, I mean, I guess it's, it's a nice composition. Okay. Ashley? I would say that this is focused on the story. And so I'm going to write off of what Sophia said. What is the story here? And it's a great picture. It's technically competent, right? This person obviously knows how to use their camera, but I don't see a story in it. Like I saw the story that went before and that's why I have to agree with, uh, you know, Sophia that like, it's a nice picture, but is it great? Do we see anything different? It's gestural. I can see the geometry in it, but I don't know. It doesn't resonate with me. It's just a pretty picture. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, anyone else want to add some some comments before we vote? Sure. Um, so for me, I, I feel like from a technical standpoint, I feel like there's a lot of negative space on the left side that could have been eliminated and it could have been a tighter image. I also don't feel like there's enough separation in all, with all the people in the frame. Like there's that right side with a bunch of people clumped together. So it's like the photographer was really focusing on the girl diving into the water not really thinking about the image from front to back to tie some things even if it's like playing with you know shapes or anything i just feel like they just saw this girl diving into the water and took a picture of them diving and they just happened to be in that position i don't think it was a an image that was thought out from from front to back um yeah so that's my okay cool i mean just if i i just i'm gonna add something like if you had like something like a fragment at front in the foreground that you see part of a person and then you have this two guys on the on the left and the the one who is sitting uh at the back looking at the sea like if you had only like those people then it would work but then i agree with canario that it gets a little jumbled and chaotic at the back okay well we're going to um to vote but i think we lost ryan um did he let's, let's give him a second to, to see if he can get back in um uh modern problems here um <laughs> would there be, would there have, uh I, i'm you know let's assume that this is straight out of camera would there have been an edit that you would have, have done on that canai or would you have taken down crop down on on that out of crop to probably the it cropped all the way into where um, you see the guy with his kicking his legs up mm -hmm. so right behind to his back he would be the last person in the shot and I'd have cropped to the kind of like her where her feet are at the end on the left side and it would have been that tight of crop she would have been really close to, to the camera and you'd have those other elements because all of them are separated pretty well the rest of the other people on the right are like extras that don't necessarily need to be in the shot and I think that would have made a little bit more interesting composition because now you have separation you have them in you know, in, in certain certain corners of the of the shot, and it just I think it would look more interesting that way. Cool, cool. You know, and other thing that kind of would work. I mean, you you would have to see, but like if you had only part of the girl's body, either like the the feet or the arms, 
you know, that might be also interesting, you know, so. Yes, I can see that. Let's, um, Ryan's back. Uh, Ryan, uh, welcome back. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. I'm not sure uh, what was said, uh, but I can say that, um, you know, even though there's obviously depth to this image, um, you know, there's people in the background that are obviously smaller, so you realize it goes far back it's still, the image still remains very flat. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if that's, um, you know, partly from the quality of the image, whether it's a, cause it looks like it was, you know, it looks like it's in focus, but maybe the quality is just a little off um, just from the export. Um, but I'm not really seeing like a story here or an interaction with the people in the back, like, you know, jumping over the guy, I get that, but I, you know, if you're sitting here, you can definitely take the time to maybe see how she can be more involved. Like maybe your hands are on top of the guy's head, um, you know, something like that. Um, just something to give, give this uh, image a little bit more, make it a little bit more uh, dynamic. Cool. Yeah, I missed being someone's head at the very front popping up looking at you. <laughs> that uh, would complete it. Oh, yeah, you know, that might, that might do it too, yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay. Uh, did you take our scores? What? Where did the scores say? I, yes. I will also vote with Tom and give it a two. Okay. Yeah. Somebody, from, somebody from the audience. So, asked, Sophia? Yes. Oh, sorry. Somebody from the audience said that if we could say the scores out loud so that they know. Okay. Okay. Are we? Uh, I'm good. We're good. We'll. Um, uh, I don't know how to. We'll we'll come back to that issue. Um, here we go. Uh, oh no, Ryan is frozen again. Oh, um, I think I'm here. I'm here. Okay. okay. Never <laughs> Sorry. Who started us off last time? I lost track. I, I think Sophia's up first. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, me again? I did last month, but... Ashley, Ashley, you're first. Go ahead. I like the picture because it is very graphic, and it's technically great, but once again, um, it feels like something that I would see from promoting like a bank. Or, or, or like a, you know, a coffee shop. And I think the largest advantage of street photography is that you do get to tell stories that don't normally get told. To me, this feels like a very commercial photograph. And while it has technical merits, it has no soul. Kanaya, what do you think? Um, see, for me, you know, I like, I like design, you know what I mean? I, like, I love graphic uh, photographs. Um, so, and I feel like it takes a certain kind of eye to identify a photo like this, um, to be, to create images that are clean and distraction free and, you know, play with shapes and stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I think it's a great photo. Is there a story? Not necessarily. Um, I don't really see a story, but I still respect the the, the eye that's able to to create an image like this because not everybody can. So I think the image is, is is cool. I can't really tell you how to, how to do it differently because I feel like this is one of those things where it's a it's the the practitioner's eye and aesthetic, you know. And so I mean, I think it's cool. <laughs> anybody else want to add some thoughts on this? Yeah, I could I could say something about this. Um, so I, I like, you know, cause I want to, I want to say this just because this is a style of street photography that's not done a lot. And, you know, that's, that's an opening as a, as a artist. Um, cause it's not always about being the best about what you do. It's about being the only one that does what you do. So, you know, I, I, probably would never make a street image like this because um, that's you know not the style that I hold myself in but I think 
taking this, whoever is the creator of this, taking this and, you know, taking it further and continuing this project where you have, you know, maybe a thousand images like this, you might be able to pick out a couple of good, you know, 20 photos from there and have yourself a good set of images that really cohesively work together. Um, as far as a standalone image though, you know, there's, you know, it's all graphic. There's not too much of a story going on, but I bet you could have a story or some sort of, um, I, I, we don't know the photographer in the last one, but there was a, I don't even know what that was the last one, um, with the strawberries. There's a kind of like ballet that happens sometimes. And that's why those types of photos work out. And I think that you could apply whoever the creators of a photo could apply that same kind of ballet aesthetic of, you know, finding when every, the rhythm and everything hits that certain peak point where, you know, this image really would come together. Excellent. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and vote. I'm going to be moving us on, along a little bit. Uh, uh, we had some great discussion and some great photos, um, but several more to go. Uh, go ahead. Let's vote, and I'll I'll try to. Um, Kanayo has got a four. Um, Ryan's got a three. Looks like three. Sophie's got a four. Tom's got a three, and Ashley. I talked a lot smack, but I will give it a four because it is so technically proficient. It's a beautiful picture, but mm -hmm. soulless. Okay. Excellent. Okay, next next up. And in, in leading us off is going to be Kanayo. Kanayo, you want, you want to take a shot? So um, I think this is this is this is nice. Um, the, the I guess what's obvious about it is that obviously the colors. Um, you know, he's he has yellow and everything else is yellow and white. Um, I think it's. I think it's it's I think it could obviously could be better. I think there should have been a little bit more elements, like maybe additional people. So I feel like this is one of those photos where you um you get this frame, this is the safe one, and you stay there for another 30 minutes and wait for additional people to enter the frame and just shoot through that entire thing till something else happens. Um I feel like, like it's rainbow. Missing that, it's missing that something else. Um like a rainbow. <laughs> uh, I mean it's a rainbow, cool, but that rainbow's not going anywhere for the next 30 minutes. So additional things to come in too, additional people. I mean, he's sitting there, so he's obviously there for, for a while, um, at least as far as we can tell. So I feel like there's just some additional things that could have entered into the frame to just take it up a notch. Um, but I think, it's, I think it's a cool photo. Ryan, you, you got anything to add? Um, well, I know Kanayo pretty well, and I'm surprised um, he didn't say anything about his his kind of approach to photography, which is eliminating the distractions. Um, and this is a you know whoever took this photo, you found you found the spot, you found like the inter interesting location. Now you just got to keep you know shooting it to find find you know the shot that that you know sings. And um, um, I think the moment or the the photo is in this location. I don't know if this is the exact photo. Mm -hmm. um, one, one thing that really sticks out to me, and maybe it's just a rebellion of the times, is I hate when people are on their phones because everyone is on their phone all the time. And I'm not saying that you can't take a picture of someone being on the phone, of course not. Um, you know, Everything can be done. There are no rules, nothing matters. Do your own thing. But <laughs> wow, in terms- modern. Um, <laughs> what'd you say it's so postmodern than our view <laughs> but um so i would say just you know limiting distractions um i don't know if the i know i know the rainbow is a, a cool touch um but i don't know if it was you know necessary and i would also just advise trying to get closer um and maybe yeah eliminating those distractions like in the back um so, you know, this whatever thing this is is really cool. I like the, oh, this. the rainbow is the thing, right? Because you say you hate living in a time where people are on their phone, and I think what makes this picture work is that you have an entire beach with an entire ocean that covers seventy percent of the earth with an entire rainbow, and you're still on your phone. <laughs> Right. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what works about it. That's the story to me, right? The the things, the things you ignore. 
is what works for me. Let's vote. Three. Ryan's got a three. It looks three. like Sophia's got a two. Tom has got a four. I got a four. I got a three as well. Kanayo's three and, and Ashley's four. Excellent. You got that, Chantal? I'm sorry, Kanayo is three, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, I got it. Yeah. All right, next one. Awesome, Hell, your seat looks amazing. It looks very comfortable. <laughs> I know she's like in a studio. <laughs> wow. All right, uh, Ryan, you're, ba you're back up. I'm back up again. Okay. Um, where are we? I guess the DC Metro. Um, so it's definitely graphic in terms of, you know, graphic design, not, you know. <laughs> um, I, I see the, the woman who is obviously, you know, the main focus that pops up first is the woman with the book in her hand. Um, and it looks like her, I guess she's maybe starting to get off the train. Her her, her gesture and um, facial expression is kind of in between. You know, there's, um, but the the gesture, the expression of the woman that's kind of looking at you is is definitely interesting. I'm interested in that. Um, I'm trying to decide if you know this um, you know offset window is is working, um, and I don't have an answer just yet. I feel like I need to sit with the image longer, but. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Tom, you got anything to add? Uh, well, subway photography is um, sort of a genre unto itself. Uh, there's um, there's some you know classic images, especially out of New York, um, and this one perhaps suffers in comparison to the opening image that we had um, uh, with uh, the mother and uh, children, our our subway Madonna, as yeah. Ashley put it. Um, here, uh, here, here! You're engaged by the the woman casting a sort of BDI at the viewer, which is which is an asset. Um, it's it's just hard. There's so there's a lot of photographs, uh, a lot of people taking photographs in the metro. It's a, it's easy to do this sort of um, peeping tom sort of through the window thing. Um, it. I think the ha the standards are really high just because it is sort of its own genre. So to uh, to do something, you have to do it quite differently. And this is this is very competent. Uh, it's but it's not exceptional to me. Uh, and I wish I could say something that would make it exceptional, um, but that's it's just not. Someone else. So, will have um, a there's a there's a Bruce Gilden quote. I'm pretty sure it says. Um, that says, you know, if you can't, if you can't smell the street, it's not a street photo. And um, I think that plays into this just a little bit because it's very hard for me to get in the photo. Like I don't, I don't necessarily even feel like I'm standing right there. Um, like I feel like I'm looking through another window and then I'm looking through this window. So I, I think something that might help is honestly just getting closer um, physically. Um, and then also in terms of getting closer is just getting closer of understanding your subjects more, um, you know, them at the end of the day, waiting for that moment where they're, you know, the end of the day expression comes on, you're just, you know. Yeah. Would, would anybody have cropped it just to the window? I, I whenever I see I, these I, shots. I, I think a bit longer. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I, I, think I also think that street photography isn't just about piss and shit. I think sometimes street photography is the unexpected thing. And we have to assume that this is a contemporary photo where somebody's not looking at their phone, but they're looking at a book. And if we go back to like, let's, let's go back to the, to, to the basics, right? Let's, let's go to classical paintings. This is the Raft of Medusa right there, just in the triangle of this situation. The only thing that holds it back is that there's too much negative space, but you have somebody reading a book on a subway and not looking at a phone. Nobody in that picture is looking at a phone. And I think that if you just- One person, yes, there. One person. The one in the middle. It have a lot more power. Okay, let's, okay, let's, um, let's go ahead. Good, good conversation. 
Great conversation in the chat box, by the way, if you guys are following it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for giving your thoughts in there. Um, I am reading them. I'm not able to respond to all of them. Um, let's vote. That's Kanayo's got a three. Ryan's got a three. Uh, Sophia's got a three. Uh, Tom's got a two. Uh, who had a two? Oh, Tom. Tom has a two. And, and Ashley, what did you say? It's four and a half a thing. Uh, it's not a thing. Sorry. Okay, four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, way, some people in the audience said that this pe this picture would uh, look a lot better in black and white, and I agree. I agree. Yeah. 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 But still, yeah. Yeah. Okay, next. All right. Um, who's, I think it's uh, Tom. Are you starting us off, or did you do the last one? Start it. Yeah. I think I think you're starting us off. Right. It's it's Tom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it, it's a difficult image. Um, you've got a a lot of it's taken up with sort of clutter. I like the lines of the light. I like the but they the geometry of this is is it's clashing. There's a large person's back in it. Uh, the child's face is. Um, is is relatively small and not and not that compelling. It doesn't draw you in. Uh, it doesn't draw me in. Um, I think it, I think again, it's get closer, right? That's the rule. Sophia. Yeah, I mean, I I agree with what Tom says. Um, it's just clutter. It's tilted. It's just a difficult image to look at. I mean, I really like the girl's expression. Uh, I think that's the part that I like the most about it. But it, um, but it kind of like gets lost a little bit. Um, um, I mean, there is a story there. It's just not super clear to me and uh the reason why the photographer took this picture is just not is it was it the girl or was it because of the guy who is like trying to pull up his pants um yeah i'm just like the just the visual context is just not helping uh this moment Any, anyone else have anything to add yeah, yeah i just want to say real quick that it was a good choice to put it in black and white yeah for me what this what I see here, I mean, I understand, I agree with some of the technicalities that they've mentioned, like the, the uh, tilt, um, like he's going uphill based on the tilt. But the rest of the photo, really, what I get from this is really speaking to that, maybe that, 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 that rush for, for toilet paper and groceries. And I mean, I was, in the, I, was in, I was in the store, so I saw a lot of that stuff going on. I know nobody's wearing a mask to signify COVID-19, and you don't see toilet paper in there, but it could be implied like this is the you know one of the people going through that whole running through the, the grocery stores and getting stuff and the kid is there and she's like out of it but dad is you know doing his thing and you know the fact that the image feels cluttered is probably like an emotional thing like that's how it felt like being out there going through all this stuff like it's not necessarily a comfortable feeling you know what i mean so um while I feel that technically it could have been done better, I feel like I can relate to some story here as far as the America we're living in today, uh, post pandemic. So, and I have to, you know, I'm going to agree with Tanayo, and like maybe if you put a Latinx family in this, because clearly that's a Walmart, that's yeah. clearly a man doing the best he can. He doesn't have a belt, but he has his child. Yeah. And he, he is doing his best. I think photography at its highest form, you don't have to offer up a story for it. The story is evident. Yeah. But I think for us as viewers as photography, what we owe the people who take those images is empathy. And it's looking deeper and it's identifying with an experience, but that might not be our own, but it's true 
to the society that we live in because everybody's not going to be a Dorothea Lange, right? Not everybody is going to be a Brisson, but those stories are still valuable. And I think if you love photography, the first thing you love is perspective and story because this is something that might not be true to my experience, but it's worthwhile and it's worth delving into and it's worth not discounting because I don't find it aesthetically perfect, but I do recognize a black man holding up his pants in a Walmart with his child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a struggle. It's a struggle, but it's not a struggle. But an, up, an uphill struggle. Narratives that say that this doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate the counter narrative that says it does, even if it isn't perfect. I appreciate that. Uh, let's go ahead and vote. Kanayo's got a four. I got a four. He's got a four. Tom has got a three. Um, Ryan's got a three, and Sophia's got a three. Uh, Chantal, are you good? Right. All right, here we go to the next one. Um, I, I, I lost track, but I think it's um, Sophia is leading us off. Yes. Um... Okay, well, I, I think it's a very uh, clean image. Like It's t- the opposite to the previous one. Uh, I think that the lines are really clean. It's kind of like a similar moment, you know, you know like a, we, we see a guy, we don't know what's going through his mind, but like he seems to be struggling or um, going through some, um, stuff and I like the scale you know like the big building the big structure versus like the small person and it kind of like relates well with the story um I also like that he's sort of like uh, on the edge uh I think um of the grass um sort of like he's on the edge uh so everything like in the uh, composition of this picture kind of reinforces the story I think um, the colors are also clean. So yeah, I think it's a it's it's a it's a good picture. Is it enough? Um, I don't know, but it's a, but I like it. Ashley, I like that you have have a white man sitting against a monolithic structure alone. Um, I don't like it because that's what I hope for white men, but I think especially with everything going on right now. Um, white masculinity might be a very solitary experience and you're dealing with the weight of a history you didn't write, but you're being called to correct. And once again, that's coming down to a story. Actually, I mean, like what? Sorry, I don't want to, I don't think he's white. I think he's super white. No, zoom in. He looks like a light skinned black dude. What? No, I can't zoom in, but <laughs> beard of truth, let me have my story. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Ashley's got her story. This is, this, it, this, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's unclear. I don't think that it's about. And maybe that's the best part of the story, that it is unclear, but it seems monolithic and everything seems set out before him from a perfect, from a perfect lawn, from perfect lines, and despite all that perfection and like maybe having a great job and everything else, it's not fulfilling. And that's what I see. And that's what works for me beyond the technical merits, which are obviously there. And we could talk about those, but the technical merits, um, they're always there, but the stories are nuanced. Very good. Anybody else have anything to add? All being said. Good. Let's vote. Thanks, Tom. Looks like Sophia's got a four. Tom has got a four. Ryan has a two. Um, Kanayo has a four. And Atsu didn't see yours. I'm going to give it a five, actually. Okay. Ashley got, gives it a five. Chantel, you good? Excellent. Um, Chantel, how many, how many images have we gone through? Um, this is the ninth. 
This is ninth. Okay, almost halfway. So here we go. Um, Ashley, start us off. I think it's a technically proficient picture. I like their use of silhouettes. I think that what's happening in the left corner is unnecessary. I think I've seen this picture over and over again in street photography. I don't see any story in it, but I, 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 I do see whatever. I like that they resisted the urge to invert the picture, which is something people often do with these group um, shadow pictures. I mean, it's technically proficient. And I mean, technically proficient in the way like, yes, you have absolutely imitated a Van Gogh. Great for you for imitating a Van Gogh. But what about this is about the photographer? Because I know about 15 photographers who could have taken this picture. And that's no disrespect to the person who took it, but I don't see anything original in it. I just see very rote imitation. Kanayo. So as someone who takes photos like these <laughs> and flips them upside down. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's, it's cliche. It's it does. Now I get it. So. What I feel is, first of all, I think the post-processing on this kind of blows it away. Like there's so much white, like blown out uh, uh, pixels in there. It's completely white. When you lose the texture from the ground, when you know you could have actually had clean texture and still had the shadows, but I think they over over processed this one. Or they really just blew it out um, um, with their exposure. Um, but for an image like this, um, I feel like when you do these fancy tricks, right? Aesthetics. I feel like there has to be a strong reason for it, like a strong moment. I've seen a lot of silhouette photos that have like real impact because there's really something going on, but they chose to represent that thing in a silhouette with nice uh, uh, profiles and body language and all that. But in this image, while it's interesting that they have so many silhouettes, a lot of them are overlapped. A lot of them are not really doing much or saying much to the image like there's no real story the most interesting person is the is the lady who looks like she's leaning with her phone or something that's the most interesting interesting silhouette other than that the rest of them are just like people standing around and overlapping on each other so i feel like um this is the kind of thing that you would shoot 1000 frames to get one image and that one image would have everybody in the right position and maybe something really interesting going on in the scene but as far as i'm concerned there's nothing really going on the, the, the quality of the image is pretty bad based on, you know, the blowouts, the white, white space. And yeah, that's, that's it. Anybody have anything else they want to add on that? Yes, I will. I, I would just like to add something. I, I agree with Kanayo. I, I feel like it's definitely overexposed. And I guess, I mean, you could do that on purpose, but then do it all the way. Or, or just try to recover that, uh, those white um, spots. And uh, so I've seen a lot of pictures like this, um, but I have to say that the negative space between people is kind of amazing. So I really enjoy that. It's like most shadows do not touch each other, which is kind of difficult to do. Um, so, so I really, yeah, I really like that about this picture. It's just like wonderful to see all this like negative, negative space. Excellent. Um, anyone else have anything they want to add before we vote? Let's vote. Kanayo has a two. Ryan has a three. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Ryan has a three. Ryan has three. a three. Tom has a three. Um, Sophia has a three. And Ashley? Two. Two. Um, Joe, I just wanted to say something real quick yeah. um, in regard to this image before we move on. Um, I, th I think it's really important to know, you know, the history behind images and, you know, what photographers have come before you and what images they have made to really understand where we are in terms of, you know, photographers and what, what new paths can be paved. Um, so in the chat, uh, I just, um, I, I posted a, um, the name of the artist that do, that did this in the 30s, uh, Andre Kurtz, or I guess he's a Czech or a Russian. Um, 
Oh, is he younger? <laughs> yeah, how much I know. Um, so just another thing, you know, always be doing your research about uh, photographers and their work. Just a good practice. Absolutely. If you've taken a picture, chances are someone's taken it before you. Um, yeah. Next, next one. Great, great, great commentary. Um, let's start with, is Kanaya, are you up first? I think it's your uh, turn. I think I might be on this one. Yep. Um... Uh, so, uh, I guess I'll call, call uh, so, uh, the lights, so, oh, actually, you know what, let me put this down, I'm seeing some of the images blocked, okay, um, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so it's inherently COVID related, right, Kanayo? Yeah. You know, it's a sign of the times. Right. Um, I don't like the light. The light doesn't do anything for me. Like, it's not... I honestly don't even know what to say, to be honest. For well, one, I see this... I think that's the stethoscope on the right, right? Yeah. Yes. I don't even understand what's in front. Like, is it a wall? How is there a stethoscope hanging up there then? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I am a bit confused about this image. I don't know how to feel like i don't i understand it's covid related i see the, the, the pp um but i don't really know what the story is i don't other than this was a photo taken during during you know the pandemic i don't really understand what i don't really take away from anything from it so it's hard for me to even like uh give a critique on it like i don't know can i ask um, a question yeah go ahead is, is, was this in camera or was this the amalgamation of two different pictures? I I don't know if I know how to see that. I, but. I had to stare at this one for a long time. Yeah. And what I believe we're looking at here is someone in the foreground that there's a, a, a perspective play here with someone in the foreground is slightly out of focus. And the woman with the mask off of her face is behind her in the background. That That's how I, how I after looking at this thing, um, came across because I couldn't figure out what was the big face like a poster in the background and the woman the other one was the foreground but it it, it finally dawned on me that this woman is like uh, uh, on the wall close to us and then the other woman who's in focus is is behind her mm -hmm. yeah but it looks like a, some sort of advertisement Photoshop, that's just what happened because I uh, I think someone I don't know. Let me not let me not make any assumptions. I don't think this happened in camera. I don't think this is how and maybe the person who created this picture is you know a part of this conversation, but I would say it doesn't look that way because there's an entire titty running into an entire mask. I, I tell you what, whoops, sorry. After we uh, vote, after, we after after the results are in, the, the, the photographer is actually in the in the, in, the, in attendance. And I, I will I will um uh if we have time, I'll I'll bring him on to to, to tell us exactly what um what we're That's seeing. Going to be. What's that? Yeah, I would I would love to hear that because I do think there's a political sort of play here. There's a person with a mask and there's a person who's not wearing a mask. But I'm I'm just not confident that this is the image that was in front of his camera. I feel like it was two different images that he pushed together, and maybe not as successfully as hoped. Uh, anybody else have anything they want to want to add? I just wish the exposure was better. Okay, let's vote. Um, Tom gives it a two, Ryan gives it a three, uh, Ashley gives it a one, uh, and Sophia is a three. I, uh, can I, I, two. I'm a two, can I? Can I is a two. Okay, uh, next image is this one. And I think, um, Ryan, you're starting us off. Okay. Well, I can definitely smell the street. <laughs> um, I guess the story is here that, you know, this 
guy, this little boy was not born with any brothers and he has to deal with sisters. Um, I also get a sense of, you know, maybe they're not living in the most, you know, rich, uh, richest of places. So there's a sense of poverty. I almost looks like the same doors from earlier where the nuns were walking, but I, I can see it's a little different. Um, I feel like that's a Cuba for them. You know, it's all about the expression I, on the right, the kid that's just, you know, just had it. Um, but, you know, my eye keeps jumping back to uh, left to right and left back to right to left, you know. It doesn't have the depth that I typically search for in my photography. Um, but I think that there's, you know, there's a moment here. I think this is an excellent photo. Um, I know it's not a photo that, you know, a, a photo you shoot at F-16 and see all the way through, but there is a moment, there's a story. I mean, it's it's perfect. And it's, mm -hmm. that, you know, not only is it maybe he has no siblings, but it could also be like, I'm the oldest boy and I, and I have two younger sisters and still I still feel alone with my siblings, you know. Um, there's there's a there's once one side of the frame says joy and happiness the other side says uh you know sadness you know i mean like it's i think it's great there are no distractions i love the textures in the, in the scene um the crop is great it's it's close up it's close enough uh, there's not a lot of wasted uh, negative space on the sides and the corners um, texture is really nice yeah it's a good I texture like, is beautiful I feel, like, I feel like it's a cuba photo like it just it says cuba to me but it might not be um yeah, I, I think it's I think it's great. I think it's strong in every sense. Uh, I just want to say one more thing. I really like how the leg kind of like, you know, because obviously you're going to start looking at the boy. You know, he's that's that's the focal point, at least in my mind. I like how his leg kind of leads you over towards the other girls um, that are having a good time, and it really just, um, you know, exemplifies that space between them and even though they're occupying the same space there's this totally different internal you know thing going on where people are having fun this guy's very you know i guess uh just inside his own mind you know so so i, I want to go back to a question that someone uh in the chat posed and they and i'm paraphrasing probably but they said if there's no story is it not street it it it, it is it street photography if there's no story? Did anybody want to yes. want to address that? So I, I uh, street photography, you know, I, it's a it's kind of a really stupid term. If you're listening to this, don't don't take street photography so literally. It, it street photography can happen anywhere. It's not so much a place to take photos as it is a style and mode of thinking. Um, you know, it's an attitude. Um, how you like, you know, how you creating images, um, and um, wait. The question was this one: the the legal concern. No, no. Or? The question was um, it was basically we we've had a lot of comments about I don't see the story there. What's the story? Uh, is it is it I, not considered street photography? There's not a story. That, I don't believe that, but I know that some people, and for example, for Ashley, story is paramount, which I think is fine, but like not for everybody. So I, I don't think that the story is a prerequisite. I think that there are different styles of street photography. Some people focus more on stories and some others focus, focus more on um, forms and geometry. And those are like, for me, um, legitimate uh, street photography, um, and it just doesn't matter. It's just like, mostly it's just an opinion of the photographer. Like, what do you prefer? Do you prefer what is most important for you? Is this a story or is it the composition or both? Or is, I think that it just depends on the person. So, um, the story is really to the, to the viewer, right? I mean, that's, I think the, 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 what, what the goal is, is, is once it leaves your camera, it's not yours anymore. Once you post it somewhere, it's the world's to decide what is the story in this image. And, and no story is correct, I would think. I mean, and the story belongs to the world. But I think if you want to become a better street photographer, because Sophia has stories and Ryan has stories, I, they might not start with telling a story, but you know what's really boring? Taking a picture of a stop sign. You need to have a point of view. You need to be an entire person. 
when you walk into this experience. The reason the picture we're looking at now works is because there's a narrative that we can grab onto. The reason that we have referenced um, Renaissance painting is that there, there is a story there. As innocuous as it seems, the element, the, the primary element of street photography is the human component. Well, and so, you yeah. need to be a human first and foremost. You need to have empathy. You need to know who you are when you go out and take that picture. Because honestly, the stories I, the pictures I have found the most boring are pictures of, I took a picture of a puddle. So let me- I took a okay. picture of a silhouette and, and that's fine. And that's great, but bring your whole humanity to that experience and ask yourself, why does that resonate with me? I find street photography to be an exercise and understanding myself better and my fellow human beings. The reason I love Kanaya's photography, or Sophia's, or even Chris, Sus even Chris Suspect's photography, is that they walk into that situation being entire humans. So I think we do a disservice if we say that there's not a story, because the story is you. You are the story. What you choose to photograph is the story. So please be a whole human being. Very good. So, and I, you, have a, you want to close this conversation out? You had something? Yeah, so, um, so what, I, what I feel about that is, you know, if your, 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 your image is abstract, where we really can't tell what the story is, it should have something else. Is it highly like, uh, graphic or like the one with the with the road like there was no real story but they they took the time to make something so you know if you and, and the way I look at it is it, it kind of like piles up if you start with a highly technical graphic image then add gestures then add a story it's I mean that's a 100% awesome image but like the more you take out the less compelling the image be becomes so you start with graphic, okay, that's cool. It's graphic, it's technical. I don't really get anything from it other than the beauty of what they have created, cool. Then you throw in gestures, then you throw in a story. And as you add those things, the, the image, you just build on the image. And at the end, once you have all those things in that one image, it's very powerful because not only is it visually striking, it's also, there's also a story. And, and that's why I love James Natchway because he, he takes he, he adds on every element. His images are beautiful to look at. They could be images of the most horrific things, but they are created and crafted so beautifully. But there's also other layers. There's a story there. There's uh, there are gestures. There's, you know, he uses everything in his toolbox and not just that one thing that we are comfortable with. Like, oh, I just like, you know, highlights and shadows. I'm going to make random photos of random people with bright highlights on their face and rest in shadows. But the more you can add to those images, those layers, it, it just makes the image so much stronger. And that's my take on it. Like, it doesn't have to have a story if you're going straightly for design and looks and aesthetics. It doesn't have to have aesthetics and all that if you're only going for a moment or a story. But if you can combine everything together, then you have the strongest image. There's nothing, there's no, there's no way anyone wouldn't appreciate an image with all those factors in it. Yeah, that's my and I just add, uh, like, I agree with Kanayu. I will also say this. You can have the strongest story, but if the composition is not there, then for me, it's just not gonna do it. Right, because so, you're, you're, you're right. an aesthetics person. I'm an aesthetics person. I love all my images to look a certain kind of way, to have no distractions, to have all these compositional elements in it. I love all of that. But I've also noticed that the more I do that and the, the more I lack gestures and stories and stuff like that, the less impact, that, that just has a visual impact, it loses, the emotional connection a person could have to an image. You know, okay. It just becomes a pretty thing. You know? right. and so, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this on. <laughs> this is an endless debate. I'm gonna move this on. I'm gonna move this on. I, 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 I think this has been great. I'll save that thought because you'll have a chance to, to come back to it.
But I just I do want to get us to vote on this on this image. Can I just say one more thing about this picture because I think that it's <laughs> great uh, briefly because um, and I'm sorry to be like the very technical in terms of composition, but I really like this composition because of the golden. Um, yes. There Good. Is, I'm glad. Like, thank you. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you have the square, which, you know, where the boy is, and then you have the two girls sort of like in the, in the rest of the picture, and they're kind of opposites, right? Like it's, uh, the girls are wearing white, he's wearing black, girls playing, they're having fun, the boy is uh, upset or sad, uh, bored, um, and he's alone. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. The Fibonacci uh, spiral, the novelist shell. Listening. It runs through his leg, and um, and then the uh, circle comes around the girls. I was going to say, uh, Sophia Canayo, um, anybody you're listening to on this chat, they are just masters. Uh, Sophia, honestly, you make me want to take color photography. Like, you want me to take color pictures. You're so good at it. You're you're just so good at it. Um, so anybody listening you really need to listen to these people and you need to get on their Instagram feeds if you're trying to figure out what you're going to do with your photography because I've learned a lot from all these individuals let's vote yeah. let's vote okay thank you Kanayo mom has a four um, I give it a four Ashley says four it uh, looks like Kanayo has a five. Five is a five. One. Sophia? Okay, four. Four. Okay. Has four. Ryan, did you vote? Yep. He did. Five. Is he frozen? <laughs> he's frozen. He did vote. He gave me a five. He did give me a five. Okay, he, he is frozen. We'll move to the next picture and we'll wait. Oh, he moved. Okay. Um, oh, oh, I'm here. Yep. He's oh, here. shit. Okay. Um, I completely have lost track, but I think we're on Tom Mullen starting us off. All right. Um, so it's um, the frame is filled up with all kinds of action, and uh, the spacing is really nice. It's not there, we don't have the blow and highlights of the previous um, silhouette image. It's you do you. It, you can feel you feel up the place. Um, it's a it's a really nice image. I don't. Uh, it doesn't move me particularly. It's but it's a very calm, calm, pleasant image, uh, and it's uh, technically. Uh, you know, technically exactly where it should be. Um, I I wish the these fellows over on the right in the trees. Had been better spaced, but that's uh, that's sort of a quibble. I love the playgrounds. I love the the lines. It, there's sort of pictures within. You could you could take three or four different images out of this. So it's the more I look at it, the more I like it. Actually, uh, Sophia. Yeah, I I mean I agree with what Tom has said. Um, it's um, nice that uh, everybody's kind of separated. I like the guy who is. Uh, and one of the hula hoops, the his head is inside. That's a nice detail. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, again, it does. I'm not like super excited. It's just a very pleasing uh, picture. Um, um, but okay. Yeah. So for me, I love this image, or maybe love is a strong word. I like I like the image. I think it's really great. Um, I think it's a good way, a good example of how to use silhouettes um, when we talk about the first image the, with all the shadows and stuff this is a good example of how to execute that where there is motion there's there are gestures um, there's great contrast nothing is blown out uh, personally i would have cropped out like tom said the the right side out of taking everything right before the trees out sorry after the trees i don't know before the trees out of taking what am i saying the trees <laughs> out <laughs> Taking off the right side after the girl with the with the hoop, I would have taken that out, the trees and the other people on the side. And on the left side, I would have taken out uh, everything before the guy on the bike. So those two guys sitting there in the corner, I would have taken that out and had the guy on the bike as the last person in, in, the, in the scene. Uh, because everybody else 
is really separated. Like you could see every single silhouette as a, a single individual. Those guys are like clumped up there. They're not really adding anything to the composition. On the right side as well, they're clumped up. The trees are distractions because they're the only tall thing right there. You know, so you have had this clean image with just sky and all the silhouettes at the bottom and all the shapes, the circles, the triangles, the rectangles, all of that in the background. I mean, I think it's, I think it's brilliant. If those uh, modifications are made, I think the image would be brilliant from a graphical standpoint and the gesture, you know, including gestures at some level of moments. No, no true story. I mean, it could be a, the story could be a day at the beach in whatever that beach is, but no true emotional connection. Unless maybe you, you do that stuff every day on the beach. So. Okay. I would like to say, Kanaya, that you don't always need a, an emotional connection. I know that's like my whole thing, but <laughs> the reason it works is because photography is about light and time. Hey, I agree. I mean, I, I'm just... You have to adapt. And this works really, really well. Just the symmetry of gestures yeah. is so strong. It almost seems like a picture you would take. Right? I, I love the photo. I did it. Yeah. I agree. I, I, I mean, awesome. And I, I don't think that they uh, were like, hey, guys, everybody throw your arm in the air. But I think they maximize their knowledge of their craft, their knowledge of the hardware they, that they had. Because honestly, look at the symmetry in this. Look at Look at the arms going back. Look at the face in a hoop. Look at the circles. I mean, if wow. the, uh, I, I, I might not take this picture. I cannot knock it for everything it's achieved. So, I mean, can I give it a five? Yeah, in, in a second you can. Uh, <laughs> anyone else have a, um, have a comment before we go to the vote? Yep. Let's vote. Now you can, Ashley. Uh, Tonight, four, Ashley, five, Ryan, four, Tom, four, and you're, you're, you're very light there, Sophia, three. So Sophia gave it a three. All right, next, next image. Uh, Chantel, how many, what, what number are we on? 13, uh, 13, that was 13. Okay, we're gonna move it along. How many images do we have, Joe? 20. 20. Oh. Um, I think uh, Sophia is up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Well, remember that discussion we were having about um, story and form. Um, well, I, I guess there's a story here. Somebody is smoking. Um, I mean, uh, I, I actually I love uh, chiaroscuro pictures where you have like a high contrast between light and shadow, but this might be a little bit too much. I think there's too much negative, negative space. Um, so basically, I mean, there are not that many elements in the picture. So I, I think that if there was a little bit more, if we could, maybe if the darks were not so dark, maybe we could just see what else is happening uh, and it would make it a little bit more uh, interesting and, and intriguing. It doesn't, um, right now, I, I just think that it needs something more. Ashley? We might have lost Ashley. Oh, in her place. Temporarily. All right, go ahead. Anybody, anybody else? So I'll speak next. Yeah. Oh, you want to say something? Yeah. Go so ahead. for me, I feel like, you know, like, I think I agree with what Sophia said. Um, I think also there's like too much negative space. I think that this should be a, really, a lot closer. So the only subject in the image is the hands, right? So it should be a little bit closer so we can see the details in the hands. If, if it was like a, a really sharp image, if they had like down to like maybe like uh, wrinkles, if they have any of their veins, whatever, but like the details in the hands. And I think since there's a cigar in, in the, you know, between the fingers, I think that cigar should have, should have like had character. Like say, you know, you've seen sometimes people are smoking and they, all the ash is like, extremely long or something and like just about to break off and you're wondering how they're able to maintain all that ash on the cigarette. I feel like it's one of those kind of photos where there had to be something spectacular about the hand and the cigarette in the hand or something. So, so like you understand why it's a subject of a, of a black image. You know what I mean? Like why that, what, I mean like to me, you ask the photographer, 
why did you take that image? You know, is it because you just happened to see light on a hand with a cigarette and you felt, well, I could play with this look or did th was there really something about what you saw that made you feel like you needed to isolate it and present it to us? And I feel like it's missing that something um, to make it worthy of being the only subject of the photograph. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyone else want to, um, welcome back, Ashley. Anyone else I never, I never left you guys. I heard Tom be like, we lost Ashley. You did not lose me. You <laughs> lost my video, but you did not lose me. <laughs> okay. It's quite striking. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's com it's it's got a real sense of mystery to it. It's um, uh, too, much, too much mystery. Too much mystery. Yeah. No. I, I quite like it. It's so <laughs> so um, detail. You know, this, the it, there's enough. This, de there's enough oh, you sorry. can see. You can see that it's the n end of a cigarette. So it, in it invites a story. It invites storytelling. <laughs> Ashley, you should be all over this. It's a great hand. <laughs> Ryan, do you have something? Um, well, yeah, I just wanted to say that, you know, obviously people could only really submit one photo and we, I think, you know, you guys were only uh, picking one photo per person um, out of your finalists. Like there's not, you know, any duplicates. That being said, um, you know, there's not, there's definitely a lot of mystery going on. Um, but this is, again, one of those images where, you know, I don't see a lot. Um, and right now it feels kind of like a fine art project, more so, more than a street photography project. Um, but you know, again, you put, you put a hundred images that have this sort of feel and you know, you might really have something. Yeah. I'd like to see more from this person. Yeah. I, 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 let's take a, um, don't stop doing this. Let's take a second to, um, to also talk about the images that are presented. These aren't necessarily the 20 best images. Because uh, Ryan is correct, we only took one image per photographer. So there are definitely two or three photographers um, in this selection who had multiple images that could have easily been in, in, in the top 20. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. I won't name any that I um, um, put any on the spot. But, um, but there definitely were, were, were some with multiple images. And um, yeah, yeah, this, this photographer, I could have picked a different um, image as well. But um, I, I thought it was interesting and, and wanted to hear the conversation especially. Um, anyone else before we vote? I think it's an interesting picture. I think like once again, we're circling back around to um, Renaissance painting. I feel like they're giving us a symbology that we don't know yet, which is kind of a, you know, a hallmark of um, Renaissance painting. I think if just a little fleck of red maybe would have brought it together, but I would like to say there's a whole lot of negative space. <laughs> All right, let's let's vote. Uh, Tom has a four. It looks like Kanayo has a three. Ryan has a four. I have a two. Ashley has a two. Uh, Sophia has a two. Did I miss anyone? That's it. Okay. I'm good. Next image. And. Um, Kanayo, are we back around to you, or am I on Ashley? A Ashley, I think you were starting us off. Um, I really like this uh, image. I think part of it is because it's familiar with, it's familiar to me in a variety of ways. It's familiar to me because it's the Metro. Um, it's familiar to me because the colors work really, really well. It's familiar to me because, um, Honestly, I just really, I'm just rooting for everybody black. I'm rooting for this woman. So I think you got to ask somebody else because I, I, you know, I might be biased, but I, I'm, I'm rooting for DC. I'm rooting for the outfit she put together in the way that mirrors her glasses. Um, it just works for me, but like I said, I might be biased. So move on to somebody else, maybe. <laughs> who wants who wants to, who wants to offer uh, another thought on this photo? Uh, I, I could go. Um, I, I would like to see this image in black and white, like uh, the semi-low contrast black and white, so you can see a little bit more detail. So it's not just shadows and 
the highlights, but um, I'd love to see him black and white because I, I, this is this has that low ISO coloring to it. Um, uh, but I mean, I, I feel like I get I get the story. You know, um, I the composition is is, is nice. Uh, I like I like how you know she's 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 actually in a she's in a decent contrast area where you know her the highlights on her face are popping off the background um and i, I don't mind the people in the background walking through the scene that just adds a little bit more into the image um but yeah you know just it kind of says the, the the commute you know um that dc commute um i think it's cool i just i just love to see it in black and white cool cool yeah. um let's vote Kanayo gives it a three, Tom gives it a three, Ryan gives it a three, um, Sophia is at a two, yes. and Ashley it gives it a five. five. Okay, uh, next, <laughs> next image. Uh, Chantal, are you good? Yep. All right, um, Kanayo, start us off. Woo! I like this one. Um, I love the... I love the light. Um, I like the the book end on the on the right side, the head on the corner there, and I like actually how it, it diagonally goes up. You know, um, the, the 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 environment isn't distracting. It's it's a nice uh, backdrop, no distractions. Um, I, I like the look on her face. I know she probably doesn't like the fact that her photo is being taken, and that's what she's looking at, wondering who the creep who's taking that picture is. Um, but I think it's great. Um, I think hey. it's, yeah. Ryan, anything to add? Um, no, um, why don't you move on to another? Anybody else have anything they? Uh, I wish I. I, I, I oh, go ahead. No, 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 Tom, go, go. I wish, uh, I wish the light had fallen on her hand, and that's, um, it just uh, seems to be a missed opportunity. That, that it, she's cut off there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Sophie, I, go ahead. Yes, just briefly. So, I, I mean, I, I like the picture. Um, I see another golden ratio here. I, I don't think it's as successful as the other picture that we saw, uh, but it's a nice fragment. I mean, I think it's very pleasing, uh, the composition. Um, but yeah, it, her expression is not the best because I think that he's realizing that he's been taking She's been uh, photographed and uh, she's like sort of like halfway to getting upset. <laughs> yeah, very good. Let's vote. Well, hold on. I would like to say that <laughs> image sinister. I find it sinister because she looks scared of a child who is menacing. But the only difference between her and that child is that um, she has breasts and he doesn't. I think that's really great social commentary. I agree with Tom that more light on her hand. She looks like she's calling 911. It looks like a Twilight Zone episode. But also, let's vote. I give it a five. Thank you, Ashley. Yeah. Five for Ashley, three for Tom, three for Ryan. Um, uh, Sophia gives it a four. And Kanayo, where, where are you at? Five. five. I got it. Kanayo's got a five. Awesome. Uh, we're on the, the home stretch here, folks. Thank you for, for um, staying with us, everyone in the audience. Um, Ryan, start us off. Well, this is certainly an Im interesting image. Um, I mean, you can't not, you can't not appreciate the eye. Um, I do wish that something a little bit more interesting maybe um, that could relate, um, you know, the sleeping subject with the, with the lady in the red, um, you know, it may be someone on the street sleeping, whatever it is. I think that might've worked with your, this particular story a little bit better, but um, yeah, the, the, uh, the perspective is, is amazing. Extremely interesting. Who yeah, else? Now I, I want to go out and make photos of people sleeping in their cars now. <laughs> yeah, so I agree 100% with what Ryan says. Um, like maybe someone push, I think what would be ideal is someone, what, what, what I think would have been ideal and more 
likely to happen is somebody pushing a baby stroller and the baby sleeping in the stroller because that could happen. Um, a random dude just sleeping there at that time might be a little bit harder. Um, but I agree 100%. Like, it just misses that one thing that ties into him sleeping. Because right now, it's, it's really still just about him. The person there just is a random. So cause this is one of those photos where you really camp. You sit there for a while, and you, you shoot and hope. And you stand there to, like, you know, you see what you want walking down the street and sleep at that time, then make that photo. But, yeah, I agree 100% with what Ryan is saying. Um, you know, it could also be something that, you know, it doesn't have to be a guy sleeping. It doesn't have to be like this and this and they parallel each other. It could be, you know, they intersect each other. Yeah. And maybe what's going outside on outside is like a freaking parade. Right. And, you know, <laughs> or some right. large event. And this guy's just like, or you know, even though the window's cracked, he is just out. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah. Excellent. Uh, let's, let's vote. <sighs> Kanayo gives it a three. Yeah. Ryan has a four. Tom has a three. Three. Uh, four. So Tom gave it a three. And Ashley, did you say? A four. Four. I gave it a four. Ashley gave it a four. All right. Next photo. <laughs> Let's go to um, Tom. Tom, start us off. Uh. This is great. It's got all the elements. Uh, it's got a troika of people, things that come in threes are somehow really pleasing, uh, just as Cryptic. a rule of composition. Um, the eyeball behind uh, anchors the image nicely. Uh, the people look interesting. You want to know more about them, like what kind of event this is. Uh, you know, I, I have to pitch about the feet being cut off um nope. we're obliged to do that here um, <laughs> the uh the the way the light is um coming exploding out is a, a of benefit to the, this um and the and the black and white treatment's really nicely done it's a great memory of of a fun event i don't know if it's a kind of a moving story or a you know powerful social trenchant social commentary but it's it's a it's a glamorous and um and well executed image who else Welcome. Take care of them. anybody else want to offer then let's vote yeah i think tom pretty much covered it mm -hmm. uh Kanayo gives a three tom gives a four ryan gives a four um sophia has a three and Ashley, did we lose you or are you still there? Hello. Ashley gives a four. Yeah, did, did you see that? By proxy. <laughs> we can um, do that well, here. While, while Ashley is in, um, you know, MIA, I just wanted to bring up real quick about what Tom said about the feet. Maybe not everyone understood that. Um, but just for people in the audience, um, typically, for photographers um, when you're composing an image the bottom of the frame is the last place that you look I don't know why but um, it just happens like that way and, and that's that's a really easy way to cut off people's feet um, and usually when you know you come to that kind of point you either need to include all the feet or you need to cut off like you know somewhere where it looks intentional and right here, I think where Tom is pointing out, it just it seems like it was uh, just a mistake not thought about, uh, including everybody, or including the whole body in the image. But don't cut them off at the ankles. Go up, go up into the into the shin. Yeah, go towards the knee. Yeah. Um, Ashley, Ashley we, uh, did you want to put a boat on this one? Also, Ashley didn't leave. Ashley was still listening. <laughs> <laughs> What's your vote, Ashley? What's your vote? I'll have to give it a three. Three. Uh, Chantel, are we on the last photo? Is that, are we? No, uh, we are, well, this is number 18. Okay, two more, two more folks. We're gonna get to it. We might go a little over, but that's okay. We don't pay by the minute here. <laughs> Holy crap, this is gorgeous. Okay, let's, um, let's start it with Sophia. Sophia. Okay, um, well, it's a little bit too much going on for me and not enough separation between the characters to, I mean, obviously the girl is the one um, that stands out, 
uh, and I like her expression. Uh, you know, it's um, um, she's bored or tired. Um, I mean, I'm interested in what they're looking at. Uh, there's probably a parade going on, but it's just for me, it's just too much going on. I can't really tell apart what's, uh, you know, like the stories. Um, uh, I mean, I really like the one, now I just noticed, you know, it's just like difficult to get to all the details. Uh, but I really like, what I really like is just the two hands, uh, that man um, wearing jeans and the blue shirt holding a um, bottle of water. So his, you know, partner is yeah, exactly right there. So that's a really nice detail. So maybe, you know, I would have like tried to focus on that. Um, with maybe a couple more characters. Um, yeah. Uh, I have something I can... You, you, uh, just trying to see if there, I see more interesting stories, but I think that those are the two that stand out. Um, what, what are your thoughts, Ashley? The thing I most like about that picture, first of all, it's a bunch of white people together, so I don't even know where they are. But... Uh, what I really love is the girl who doesn't care about what everybody else cares about. Yep. I mean, everybody is so into it. And I mean, your eye goes right there, even down to the pink dress, even down to her, um, the way she's sitting on her knees. That's what I really truly love about this picture is the person, the child that chooses to go, another way and i think the other thing that makes it work is that all the other children in here are relying on somebody to tell them what they should think and what they should do they're coddled yeah they are coddled she's the only child in this picture who is held by nobody yeah look at it i mean and even if you i mean honestly the thing that would make it go better would be just to um, prop it differently. Honestly, my favorite thing is the one that looks like goddamn an, uh, a Hindu god to the right of her, mm -hmm. right? And the Hindu god of maybe love with the hands on him. It's like a very quietly subversive picture. And it, it, it works really, really well. But the only person who isn't held it's the only person who seems fed up with the BS. Excellent. Anybody yeah. else? I just, I'll, I'll I just want to add, like, I just, I noticed uh, the hands of the boy on the, on the dad's face too. Like, there's a lot of go things going on with the hands. So I would have just tried to sort of like focus on that. Uh, and then the woman, the old lady with a hat, she's also doing something interesting with the hands. Um, yeah, and the oh, woman in, in pink. So I would have just like gone closer and focus on those gestures that are, are kind of like mimicking each other. Can I? For me, um, I think this image is 100% all about that little girl. The rest of the people are really just a backdrop or a con contrasting idea to what, what she's going through. Um, I, I would have liked for the left side of the uh, the, the person in the foreground on the left to be cropped out because it's kind of distracting. Um, but other than that, I think this image is really just, she's the subject, she's placed in the middle for a reason. She's lower, so she's not even like on the same level and, and contrasting with them. You can see her, like as soon as you look at the image, you see her, you see her expression. The expression is a contrasting expression. Her mood is contrasting to everybody in there, just like what Ashley said. And I think 100% this image is just about her. And I would like to see it maybe in black and white just because yeah. of the colors and you can like, if in black and white, it seems like she's also like highlighted there. So in black and white, I think she would pop out a little bit more and you could probably like uh, burn down everybody a little bit so they are a little bit darker. And she, she, she pops through the, um, like as soon as you look, you see that little highlighted spot on, on the bottom and you see her. Um, but yeah, I think just like what Ashley said, I think it's about her in this case. I mean, I love the- Sorry, very briefly, it's a little bit overexposed and not totally- That's short. a simple fix though. You know. Those things would help also. Let's, let's vote, let's vote. What do we got there? Ryan gives it a three. Kanayo gives it a four. Sophia has a three. Tom has a three. Ashley. Four. Four. I'm sorry, I missed it. Thank you. Last one. Here we go. 
Oh. Okay. All right. <laughs> and it's going to be Ashley to start us off. Huh. Where did we start? I guess we start with the technical merits. I like the way that people are grouped in the frame. Um, I like what they are doing with light and negative space. I like the fact that they are whited out. Like, that's visually interesting. Um, do I feel anything when I look at this? Absolutely not. But I love that the way... I don't know if that's a canvas that they're holding, but I love that if you took out the side parts, it works really well with that empty door and it creates like a sense of mystery. Um, I don't know, it's a it's a competent photo. So uh, I could add something. Hey, about it. Please. It's a competent Same. photo, but Same. I feel nothing. All right, so for me, I would crop out the people going in the other direction, well, not everyone, the, 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 the group on the left side, and have it be five people, you know, starting from, you know, five people left in the frame. And that'll play, you know, play nice with the rule of odds. So, you know, five people in the frame. And um, I like that it's a clean, it'll be, once you crop those people out, it'll be an extremely clean composition. Um, and, you know, there is a mystery there. Like, it looks like that piece they're holding, like, it looks like the piece they're holding is a part of is the door, is the doorway. And like what? The, yeah. right? So okay. that is what's interesting did. about this. That is essentially the story there. Like it might not be an emotional thing, like you said, you don't feel anything, but that was kind of genius. Because if this guy was just walking down the street with a with a whiteboard and you caught that image, what what are the odds that you'd be able to create this? Yeah. Go back out there and create that. Like it's not it's not it's very un unlikely that you can make this image again in the same place unless there's like a art pot, uh, uh, an art art place over there, and everybody every now and then someone walks around with a whiteboard. Like it's very rare that you'd be able to make this image again. So I think it's a brilliant image. I think it's one of those that's really hard to make unless they stage that. Um, and if they had just chopped off those people, propped it off from the left side, it would have been really balanced um, with those five people in the frame. And I think it's brilliant. All right, let's vote. Let's vote. Unless someone's got something. They really, they really need to add. Uh, well, I had an alternative yeah, to right. Kanayo's crop. Um, this is definitely an image that I would take. Um, and I, I, you know, look for images like this all the time. Um, I think, though, you know, Kanayo said cropping out the, on the left side, right? Yeah, Which, also, so it's just, so the three people or four people on the, on the left side are out. Yeah, I, I, I think that totally does work. I think the other option is, um, you know, the the space on the right side, cutting that off just a little bit and yeah. keeping in, keeping in. And, you know, I don't know if you keep in the shadow on the right side. Yes. But uh, uh, whoever made this photo, well done. And yeah. keep right. doing it. Let's vote. Let's vote. Four. Kanayo, four. Ryan, four. Maybe uh, for what it could be, even if not, not, not what it is. Tom gives it a five. That's good. <laughs> I want to give it a five. I, I, I give it, you Sophia? know, five, but you. I have to give it out that many, so. What? Ashley, what? I give it a five. I think, uh, uh, well, I, I, no, it's a four, but anyways. What? Four or five? It's four or five. Four. 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 Sophia? Uh, I guess a four. Four. Sophia gives it a four. Ashley, I only give fives to things I don't I don't see a way to improve. If I can improve it, then I think it's a five. If I can improve it mentally, then I you lost the. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's you know I give you a lot of smack about. So, can I know, is it four? Did you say? I give it a four. I give it a four. four. Okay. I, give it a four. Yeah, so I saw a way to improve the image, but if I can't see a way to improve it, then it's a five. You know, you can't get imaginary points for the. Potential. It's more about no the imaginary points. <laughs> oh yes. You can. So we're going to announce the uh, uh, Chantal. If you could private message me the um, there's the, some ties, the scores and the ties, and I and um, Chantal, are you ready? Not yet. Okay, take your time. I, I want to thank uh, everyone who submitted. Um, you know, this was free to enter. Um, 
And really the purpose of this was to have a good discussion about street photography. And I really appreciate you allowing us to publicly critique your images. Um, I think you would not have been among this final pick if there wasn't something about your image that struck me and um, wanted uh, me to have it on the uh, stage for a discussion. Um, I think we could have had five different judges and had five different um, you know, results uh, or, or completely different results because it's just very subjective um, always. Um, and I do want to thank everyone who entered and those who didn't um, uh, appear among the top two. Um, uh, thank you as well. I, I really appreciate it. Um, Chantel, you got it? Um, yes. So how do I share with you? you um, can you send me um, a private a te text? Or text? Private text? Okay. Um, I, I kind of made some comments on what the images are. Uh, okay. And um, do we have a clear winner? Or do we have to break a tie? Uh, no, we have a clear winner, but there's a tie for third place. Okay, why don't you um, tell us uh, what the third place uh, pictures are? Uh, okay, third place pictures are the Subway Madonna, that the, the strawberries in Morocco, and the hoops in the palm trees. Oh, those, so we had three three images. That are tied uh, for third place. Okay, I'm gonna um, share my screen again so that we can go back to those images. Um, I tell you what, um, we're gonna give all three of them um, uh, Loom Cube airs, okay? So congratulations to, to all three. Um, I'll get in touch with everyone. I think the winner's there. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen again, sorry. Um, so for third place, we have gorgeous. Sorry, I got so many, so many windows open here. Um, wow, I believe we have Paul Kessel. Uh, let's just verify this. Uh, uh, Chantel, was this a, was this one of your thirds? Ah, uh, yes. And you had the um, strawberries. Yes. This is uh, Gaston, Tor Gaston Torres. And the last one was the, the, the palm tree silhouettes. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 Joe, are, so we, are yes. we re voting or are we just picking an image out of the three? So, uh, no. Chuck Fletcher. Perfect. Um, for the third, for for third. So those are the those are the three. Those are the three places. The three places, and give them all um, the the, the uh, Loom Cube Air um, as prizes. So we have a tie for third, um, and then the second place image, Chantel. Uh, okay. Okay. Where are I? I was sending you something here. Okay. Um, the second place image is. Uh, the last one, man with the whiteboard. All right. Eric Davidov uh, takes second with this image. Uh, great image. And um, let's see. What's the winner? The winner is the two girls with the boy. Ah. Okay. The black and white so that, one. That, that, one. Is, that one. Yeah. That, that one. Well deserved. Very great. Great, uh, great, great photo. All well deserved. Really, all, all the photos are really great. I, I really appreciate everyone for submitting their images. I know it's difficult um, to put yourself out there and kind of distance yourself from your own work. Um, but really well done. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Joe, for, uh, for putting this together. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I will be in touch with all the winners uh, to, 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 um, to, to get your prizes to. But again, thank you. Thank you, um, DC Street Photography Collective. I really Yay! appreciate the, the time and effort that it takes oh. and, and really your insights, your keen insights are, are, are amazing. Um, I have to, um, I gotta share my screen again. Hold on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's do this. Uh, so, uh, today would have been the day that we kicked off our, our, our photo festival in real life, but of course it was canceled. Um, we would have had a big party at the Swedish Embassy tonight. Unfortunately, uh, this is uh, this is this is the um, 
the, the world that we live in. And, but I thought it was excellent uh, kickoff to, the, to, the, to what would have been the kickoff to our festival. Thank you all. Um, thanks to the sponsors for providing the, the, the gifts. Uh, Loom Cube and uh, the Lens Flipper um, by Go Wing. Uh, thanks to all of our sponsors who really have made this, um, who stuck with us even though we had to cancel the, the in-person um, event. And really they, they've made everything that we do possible by bringing these shows um, once, twice a week uh, since the beginning of April through the end of June. Thank you to Fujifilm, Tamron, Multiple Exposures Gallery, Peak Design, Capital Photography Center, and Kate and H. Join us Friday for an amazing talk with an amazing documentary photographer, Nina Berman. She's going to be talking about her book, Autobiography of Miss Wish. It's a 25-year uh, collaborative project she did with um, Kimberly Stevens. Um, that'll be next Friday, noon to 1.30. You can get the link to sign up from our, um, from our, from our website. Uh, thank you again to the to the guest judges. And I'm, I'm gonna let Ryan, who helped me organize this panel, have the last word. Um, just uh, thank you, Ryan, for all your help in, in, in putting this together. Um, go, uh, leave us with, with some, some closing thoughts. Okay. Um, about, about all the work or? Uh... Just a, a, about anything. Sorry well, to put you um... on the spot. No, no. So again, I, you know, I, I really think it's important to talk about uh, photography and, um, you know, street photography is intrinsically a solo endeavor, but that doesn't mean that you can't learn from the people around you. And that doesn't mean that, you know, you can't um, uh, improve in a group setting. So, um, you know, and that's why we do what we do and we'll continue um, through this COVID-19 um, and 2020 uh, pandemic and we'll, we'll fight through it and we'll keep on doing uh, free events and um, um, some events that, you know, we usually pick a, pick out someone to come down from like New York or is out of town. So we need some money to fund them getting into town, but really it's, uh, you know, it's, it's all for you guys. And uh, I appreciate everyone hopping on and, um, you know, putting their work out there. Um, Thank you. Another thing that I know that some people might be interested in is um, the, you know, the DC Street Photography Collective and, you know, possibly becoming a member. So just to, you know, if, just to let you know before someone probably will ask, um, uh, we accept one person a year um, if prompted to do so. And um, the best way to really get involved with what we have going on is to come to our meetings, come to, you know, stick, stick, uh, stick to the Instagram posts. We'll post everything there. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in, you know, um, participating and possibly becoming a member, come out, hang out with us. You know, we're, we're, we're just a bunch of uh, uh, photographers that like to get together and have a good time and talk about art. Um, and then, um, you know, we can, you know, if you're invited to uh, um, apply for the collective, we'll certainly let you know. And there's a process with that that we can get to down the road if it gets to that. But uh, yeah, you know, everyone's a part of the DC SBC collective. It's, it's, it's for everyone. Um, and um, we look forward to seeing you at our next event. Awesome. The to that today's event is uh, going to be posted uh, the recording of the event will be posted to our to our website to our youtube page and to our facebook page i'm also going to take all of the photos that were featured today and put them into a blog post on our site um so that um uh, you'll be able to go there and and check them out and um don't also i, I didn't mention that um dc street photography collective has an instagram and um it's DC underscore SPC, right? Yeah, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put it in the chat right now. Um, I'll include that in the blog post. Uh, no problem if you if you see the if you find the blog post, it'll be up this weekend on our website. You can find that. Thank you everyone for sticking with us. Uh, we only went 18 minutes over, which is uh, which. <laughs> um, that's that's a that's an accomplishment in itself. Really appreciate all the uh, all the uh, comments and chats. I also try to post the chat log if, if I can um, on that blog post so people can, can see some of the, the questions that were, were asked there. Uh, thank you. Uh, hopefully um, you'll be back and um, 
we're going to have stuff every week from here to the end of June. Um, take care. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you all. Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank Bye -bye. you.